everybody, welcome back to the Collins Crazy Creatures. Today I'm at the Carnivorous Plant Nursery in Maryland. Today I'm going to talk about the big four carnivorous plants. Venus flytraps, pitcher plants, sundews, and butterworts. Even though there are many more, like aquatic plants that filter feed on microorganisms, and bromeliads that have pitcher plant-like qualities as well as many others. So, let's go on a self-guided tour of the nursery. This is the North American part of the nursery where the plants are more tolerant of the cold. So first we're going to show you the plants that are out here and then we're going to talk about pitcher plants. All of the planting beds are sunken into the ground and have a water level because most carnivorous plants live in very wet soil. I was surprised to see this little frog out here, and he is playing a very dangerous game, and I hope he does not become plant food. Now let's talk about pitcher plants. There are several genuses of pitcher plants, so I'm only going to talk about them in general because they're all very similar. All pitcher plants have a large bell or pitcher that is filled with a sweet smelling liquid that has digestive enzymes in it deep down inside. And that attracts the bugs. And also the inside of the pitcher is slippery and there's also a rim to keep insects from escaping. And there are also some very unique ones like monkey pots that are so big that when it rains and they fill up with water, there have been monkeys seen drinking out of them. And there's also a newly discovered species that goes underground to catch its prey. The variety of sizes, colors, and flowers are truly amazing. This pitcher plant, as well as many others out here, are hybrids. It can also see the flowers among the pitchers. This is the main building with Highland Tropical and Tropical Plants. Let's go inside. This room holds the Highland Tropical Plants. These small little pitcher plants are the Australian species. The 
tropical highland carnivorous plants are the hardest to take care of because they need very low temperatures, but also very high humidity. This room is where the tropical plants are. This hanging pitcher plant has two fangs. This sundew has two stalks that look like a V. These are some of the tropical varieties of sundew. Sundews are very unique in that they have leaves with tentacles that have sticky beads of digestive enzymes that are very sweet smelling to insects. And they have two different kinds of leaves. They have stalk leaves like these ones and there's some that have broad leaves. And once an insect touches one of the tentacles, it close the surrounding tentacles close in on it and the ones with stalk leaves curl up and the ones with broad leaves fold in. And this final greenhouse is the Gulf Coast or subtropical greenhouse and in this room we will talk about fly traps and butterworts. You may have seen various plants with different flowers, and you notice that the flowers are much higher than the traps, and this is to prevent any pollinators from getting stuck in them. So why are carnivorous plants carnivorous? Well, even though they do photosynthesize like every other plant, that only gives them energy, and they still need nitrogen, and the bog soil they live in does not have very much of it, which is why they resort to being carnivorous and eating bugs. This is what baby pitcher plants look like. These are Venus flytraps. Venus flytraps are all one genus and one species, but they've been cultivated to have different appearances. This is your standard appearance with a green outside and red inside of the jaws. And this is about how big the jaws will get. Like, look how big it is. It's almost as big as my thumb. And there are other versions, such as ones that are red, and also the dentates, which I'll show you a bit later. And the way that, that Venus flytraps eat is that they have hairs in the inside of their jaws that won't go off once, the first, once one of them is touched, but the second a bug touches another one, 
the jaws will close in on it, and the more the prey struggles, the tighter the jaws will will tight the tighter the jaws will close, and it'll eventually turn into a stomach-like pouch that will fill with digestive enzymes and digest the bug in about three to five days. And Venus flytraps can also develop flowers in the middle of the plant that are white with five petals, and about four to ten flowers will form a spike in the middle. These fly traps are called dentates, and they're called that because, unlike normal fly traps, their teeth are shaped like shark teeth. This sundew is eating a butterfly that was unfortunate enough to get stuck in its trap. And finally, the butterworts. Early butterworts, to be exact. Butterworts are a plant that has a very simple catching me mechanism similar to that of a sundew in that their leaves have a sticky enzyme that feels slippery to us, but to a bug, but to a tiny little bug that you may be able to see on the leaves, it's a death sentence. Also, butterworts grow a long stalk with a singular flower that are, have very pretty petals. The dark red variety of Venus flytraps, if denied enough light, will turn green. These interesting looking plants are cobra lilies and they are very similar to pitcher plants. So I'd like to thank the carnivorous plant nursery for letting me have the run of the place and checking out all these really cool carnivorous plants. And their store is primarily online, so if you would like to check it out, Go into the description and click the link below. So, these are also cobra lilies and they are very cool looking. So, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel, like our videos, and see you next time on Colin's Crazy Creatures.